Hey everyone, this is our lesson on proportions. Again, this is break, broken into two parts. So this is proportions part one for pre-algebra. And the next lesson will be proportions part two. The main big idea about proportions is this. A proportion is basically two equivalent ratios, all right? Or two equivalent fractions, if we're writing the ratios in fractions. Here's an example. 3 to 4 is equal to 75 to 100, okay? These are two equivalent ratios. So that means that this is a proportion, all right? We can also write them as two equivalent fractions, like, we said, like I said a second ago, 3 over 4 is equal to 75 over 100. That's the main idea about proportions. So you've seen this before. It's been called equivalent fractions. It's been called equivalent ratios. It's been called reducing the lowest terms. And now it's called proportions. So just to confuse you, we've thrown out a bunch more vocabulary. I'm just kidding. We're at, there is actually a point to using proportions. And I'll show you that um, in the combination of these lessons. But there is some very practical purposes for looking at proportions. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. First, we are going to do a quick review of equivalent fractions, I guess this is almost. We are going to circle all the ratios that are equivalent to 13 to 10. So if something's an equivalent ratio of 13 to 10, we can also say it, that it is proportional to 13 to 10. We're going to circle those fractions. So let's look at our first one. Our first one is 130 over 100. That is 13 times 10 and 10 times 10. So we know that that is an equivalent fraction, equivalent ratio, or that is proportional to 13 to 10. How about 3 to 5? 3 to 13, 5 to 10, it's really not. Um, we could convert the bottom into 10 by multiplying it times 2. That would be 6, because 3 times 2 is 6. So that'd be 6 over 10. It's not the same as 13 over 10. So these are not equivalent ratios. In other words, they are not proportional to each other. Let's look at our next one, 5 over 13. Again, you're not, to be able to convert this into an equivalent fraction with 13 over 10 would require a great deal of finagling and working together. And there's not really a nice number that you multiply 13 times something to get 5 and 10 times something to get 13. It just doesn't work out. So I think we're pretty safe in saying that this is not an equivalent fraction. Man, two out of three of them. You think someone's out to get you or something here. Let's see their next one. 39 over 30. We're looking at the proportion or the, uh, the ratio, I'm sorry, of 13 to 10. So what would we have to do to make 10 into 30? We'd have to multiply 10 times 3. So 10 times 3 is 30. Is 13 times 3 39? It is. So now we have two fractions that are proportional to this ratio. In other words, we could have this and this, and that would be a proportion. Or this one and this one. It's there also. Let's go down to the next one, 12 over 10. Is 12 to 10 the same as 13 to 10? No, it's not. <laughs> that one's pretty easy. No, it's not at all. How about 26 to 20? Let's do the same thing we did for this fraction. What do we have to do to 10? to make it into 20, we multiply it times 2. So 10 times 2 is 20. What's 13 times 2? Is it 26? Yes, it is. So therefore, we have another equivalent proportion. 91 over 70. Let's look at this again. What times 10 will give us 70? Well, 7 times 10 will give us 70. And what's 7 times 13? It is 91. So again, we have another equivalent fraction or equivalent ratio. The next one we have is 65 over 40. What is 10? 10 times something will give us 40. 10 times 4 is 40. What's 13 
times 4. Well, 13 times 4 is equal to 52. It's not 65. So therefore, that one is, whoops, I just about circled it. Didn't mean to do that. Not equivalent. All right, so this was just a little exercise. And if you were kind of working with me as I went along, I was kind of thinking out loud, how do I find out if these are equivalent? You could also have written this as a fraction, 13 over 10, and see, see, try and see which ones are equivalent fractions. Um, that's essentially what I was doing. So this is just a basic kind of an overview, a little bit of practice to get us thinking about equivalent fractions, equivalent ratios, or in other words, proportions. All right. Let's write our own set of proportions. We're going to pick any two numbers. I'm sending out a vibe to all of you who are listening to this and hoping that you pick the same numbers that I do. Ready? One, two, three, pick. Did you pick 6 and 23? If you did, we are connected by the mind. <laughs> Either that or I'm really lucky. Most likely, you didn't come up with these same two numbers, but these are the two that I'm going to use. So to write your own set of proportions, you use any two numbers. You can go ahead and write your own. I guess you can't write it up here, but write it on a piece of paper. Take any two numbers. Then what you're going to do is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So I'm going to multiply 6 and 23 times the same number, and we'll see what happens. So let's pick another random number, 15 I picked. It doesn't matter which number you use as long as you multiply it by both the top and the bottom. So 6 times 15 and 23 times 15, watch how quick I am at my math. Look at that. 6 times 15 is 90, and 23 times 15 is equal to 345. So what we have here is an equivalent fraction. Okay, 6 over 23 is equivalent to 90 over 345. In other words, these two fractions are proportional to each other, or they are equivalent ratios or equivalent fractions. All right. Speaking of equivalent fractions, um, I don't know. I just thought this comic was pretty funny. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you had a great time. And I hope that it has helped you to understand proportions a little bit better. Have a wonderful day. And make sure to watch your next lesson, which is Proportions Part 2, to help understand a little bit more of how we can use proportions. Have a great day.